Hey, friends, it's the Drive to School podcast. I'm Pastor Goodman, and my buddy, Pastor Hull, is here. How you doing, friend? Oh, brother, I am always fantastic, but if I was any better, I would be you. Aim higher every time. I, every time you say that, and, and I tell you, I'm always hitting it out of the park when I aim for your goodness. Ah, Goodman, goodness, you get it? Little, little I like on. it. That's, that's oh, a good first time for that joke, yeah. Um, <laughs> So um, I, I, I called you up because I want to complain about something. We're just about to, uh, to start uh, our Christmas program practices. So we're going to dress up every kid in the congregation in a bathrobe, force them in front of everybody, make them act like it was way better to be back in the day with Jesus. And no church trauma will be induced at all. Help me out. I, I heard you had a Luther quote. I do. But first, is that like a furnace behind you? That it's red thing? Is that like it's a- snowing here. Man, I tell you, I mean, it's like it's like 57 degrees down here and we're acting like we're going to die any second, you know, but I bet if it was 57 degrees for you, you'd be like in a tank top and flip flops or something. I, I but, would go finish. Yeah. Blowing up, cleaning out the gutters. <laughs> yeah, I tell you. So that, that's my 88. Man, that's bad. I mean, if, if we both have this issue and then we're talking, I mean, it's the I've noticed every time like one of your kids there. runs by. I'm glad you're not driving and they're not just like trying to catch up to the car or nothing. No, I actually am driving. One of them is yelling back there right now. Please stop. But you know what? He's been a little on my nerves lately, so he'll be fine. But yeah. uh, but no, yeah, Luther. I'm back to Luther here. No, it's amazing. I was I was uh, preaching this past Sunday on the parable of the sheep and the goats, you know, and this is a great narrative. And usually it's seen as this. It's like, well, to be a Christian means you never see your good works. And if you're not a Christian, you try to you pretend like you see your good works all the time. And that's usually how it's seen. And Luther kind of changes it up there. And he has this lovely quote. It's from one of his Christmas sermons. And he says, you know, oh, if I was back then, I would I would help change the the little baby Jesus's diapers. And I would travel far and wide with the shepherds to go see the little baby Jesus. And I would do all of these things. And Luther says, yeah, of course you would, because, you know, it's Jesus. You would do it because, you know, hey, that's that's God in the manger. Of course, I'm going to go see him. And then Luther, in his own way, says those are childish and silly thoughts because you already have Christ in your neighbor right here and right now. So just go do it then. Go and go and change a baby's diaper. I mean, it's like when I wake up in the morning, I don't sit there and say, well, okay, my son, my my youngest son, Killian, which means little church. Um, I'm going to only change four diapers today. <laughs> Sorry, buddy, if you need nine changings, but I didn't pencil that in today. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's silly. Or you know what? I'm going to change two flat tires this year for Christian or for anybody. But you know what? That third one, I'm terribly sorry. You're just going to have to figure out on your own. Um, no, we just we do things. Christ is already right here in our neighbor, changing a diaper, changing that tire. Um, being kind to someone in the checkout aisle, uh, being kind to someone on TikTok or Facebook or YouTube or Be Real. I mean, Be Real, come on. All of us are, you're on Be Real, right? You're on Be Real? No, I don't even know about this. I'm too old. Tell you, be Real, man. I told Patty Boy about it the other day. You know, right. they send you an update, take a picture right now, whatever you're doing. So it's not Instagram. You don't have time to like stage it and everything, but that you know, terrifying. it's terrifying. Like, it kind of is. I've been doing it, and I don't know why, but my heart rate is a lot higher, and it seems like I have a lump in my throat now. Uh, but, but you know, you, help, just be kind to your neighbor. Say, oh, I'm, I'm glad you're doing that today. That That's what it means to live that Christian life right here, right now. That's a million times better than a Christmas pageant or program or play or anything like that. It's, it's, it's not that there's something inherently wrong with the Christmas program, but it's, it's the idea that Jesus is stuck in the past and not in the present. And, and that leaves you with a, a God who's always out of reach when you need help and, and a neighbor that doesn't ever actually matter nearly as much as the ones who've never sinned against you. And it's easier to love the neighbors who have never actually sinned against you. The reason we have to be reminded, maybe you should actually love the neighbors around you because Jesus died for them and whatever you do unto the least of these, you do unto me. So Jesus is in your neighbor as well. Um, it, it's because, well, my neighbor has sinned against me and, and that bothers me. So um, this is where we, we need to actually, again, find, well, a little bit of help, right? Yeah. Well, and that's the thing is Christ comes to you when you least expect him. I don't expect Jesus in water, bread, and wine. 
I mean, I do because I'm catechized as a cradle Lutheran, right? But no, but you can't look at it and say, oh, obviously, any more than you could yeah. the, the baby laying in the manger and say, oh, that is very clearly God. I, I see That's it now. God, right there. Because when the wise men, the Magi, came to Herod, they said, oh, no, it's this little baby that we're looking for. Not this guy who's uh, who's sitting here who's made the temple. You probably saw my son running in the background there. So now you know I'm definitely not driving with him. Uh, Better him real me. fast. So, um, it's all false, all the gospel. But that's the thing is he comes to you in, in, in these ways. He comes, I, I, was, I was talking to a member the other day. I said, I love it when people cancel on me because then God is really working for me that day. Everything I had planned, God's going to come and say, you know what? No, I'm going to have you slow down, breathe me in, take me in and let you know how much I love you. He comes to us in a little baby. He comes to us in water, bread, wine, in the weakness of a brother or sister in Christ. He comes to you and says, be at peace, take heart. This is why I've come. I come to you as the light shining in the darkness. And don't, don't wait for these big momentous things, but also don't wait for me to love you once you're big and momentous either. I came and claimed you at your weakest moment, your smallest moment, so that you may be mine forever. That's what Christ has done for you and for me. Thanks be to God for that. Amen. That's not a God you need to sort of wish you could go back in time to see. That's a God who comes to you right now. And that's that's the whole point of having the church in the first place. Exactly. He he comes to you right here, right now, he claims you. Well, it's like, like, look at John 4, for instance. I know this is not what we were talking about, the woman at the well. Jesus thirsts. He's thirsty. He wants something to drink. Why? Because he's been walking for a while. You want water when you've been walking for a while. Christ claimed even the times when you need something to drink. He claims you when you are at your best moment, at your worst moment. He claims you when you're in the middle of the Christmas pageant, when you're in the middle of cursing someone out because you're wrapping their gift. He's with you when they open that gift and they're not as excited as you wanted them to be about getting it. And he's even with you when you open that gift and it sucks. But guess what? When you get older like me, you love socks. When you're young, you hate them, but they'll be good one day. I'm old. But he comes to you in those moments. Thanks be to God for that. Amen and amen. Pastor, thanks for cheering me up and give me the gospel. Hey, brother, you cheer me up all the time. It's always good times with you. Take care, my friend.